bondages, in those generational curses, in those, uh, that wickedness that was in my life. And I'm here to tell you that there is a new liberty, a liberty to walk in holiness, a liberty to walk in righteousness, a liberty to walk in peace, a liberty to walk in love. Folks, you know what you can talk about? It's all about love, but you'll never know love until you know Jesus. You can't know it. You might know lust. You might know a little bit of compassion. You might know a few things, but you'll never know genuine love until you know the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what God has done? He has committed His love for you that while we were yet sinners, that Christ died for the ungodly. In our wickedness, Christ died for the ungodly. In our blasphemy, Christ died for the ungodly. In our perversion, Christ died for the ungodly. Why? That we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Christ died that you might live. Not live after the works of your own flesh, but you might live for righteousness. Now check it out. It says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and a spirit against the flesh. And it says those two things are contrary to one another. In other words, you can't serve two masters. You'll love one, you'll hate the other, you'll hate the other, and you'll love one. I tell you what, there's not no 50 or 60 or 90 percentile relationship with Jesus. He said you have to lay your life down. The Word of God says in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, and verse 24. He said, if any man wants to be my disciple, not a church member, but the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, he says that you have to deny yourself. In other words, you have to walk away from who you used to be. That bitter person, that unforgiving person, that lust-filled person. He says if you're willing to do that, you can be a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. There's freedom for those who would call upon His name. And here's what the Word of God says in 1 John chapter 1. He says if we're faithful to confess our sins. Do you hear that? If we're just faithful to say, God, I can't do it on my own. God, I'm full of unrighteousness. He said that He is faithful and He is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Folks, you know what that means to you and I? It means that all of those charges from the time that we were little lying children until the time that we become perverse adults, it says that we'll bring those things to the foot of the cross through faith in the finished work of what Jesus Christ did. It says those things will be obliterated. And you know how far your past would go back then? To the last drop of Jesus' blood. It says that 2,000 years ago when Jesus hung upon that cross, He looked out to the multitude and He made a prophetic proclamation. He said, Father, please forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Today I'm asking you, I'm saying, do you know what you're doing? God in His mercy has sent mercy. When we deserve judgment, God sent mercy. When we had expected retaliation, God sent mercy. Over 50 times, hear me folks, over 50 times in the Old Testament, before the cross, the Bible said that God is good and His mercy endures forever. I'm here to tell you today that mercy has been extended into this place. The Bible says we're sin abounded, that God's grace abounds even greater, that God's divine influence is drawing people unto His Folks, I'm here to tell you today that we're saved by grace through faith. It's not a work lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God. But when God comes in through grace and mercy, you don't continue on that same path. God changes you and transforms you and He gives you a new heart, a new desire, a new passion, a new love. God takes you from a place of, of corruption into a place of incorruption. God takes you a place from a place of wickedness to a place of holy. That's why the Word of God says, Be holy, even as I am holy in all manner of conversation. He says that in verse Peter. He says, be holy. But folks, you can't be holy on your own. You can't be holy for planning a church or giving to the United Way or walking an old lady across the street. That's not holiness. The only holiness was demonstrated when God in His great love sent His Son Jesus to live a holy and sinless life and to die a vicarious, a substitutionary death upon the cross of Calvary. The only way we can be holy is through faith in the holy blood of Jesus. But when the blood of Jesus comes into our life, it changes our heart. It changes our mind. It changes our thoughts. And the Word of God says this in the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 2. It says this, don't be conformed. Don't be an imitator of this world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove out what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Captain, you're going to have to give it up, brother. You're going to have to get back on track tonight, my friend. That's what the Word of God says, that God will not cast them out. God will do it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. The Bible says if you come to Him, if you come to Him, He won't cast you out. He says if you humble yourself and you'll repent and turn from your wicked ways, it says God will come in your
your life and it'll heal your heart and life. Even my friend right here, Captain Joe right here, was walking the straight path, but God is going to get him back on. God has got to get this veteran back where he needs to be. Why? Because he spent his life, giving his life to be in non war for our country. But God doesn't want you to be in bondage anymore, my friend. You know that. God wants to set you free, just like you were an instrument of freedom for this nation. God wants the cross to be an instrument of freedom for your salvation, my friend. And you know what? Tonight, God in his mercy, God in his goodness, God in his power, he's in the business of setting free and bringing deliverance even to those that feel like God has forgiven up on me. God, if you've forgotten me, God has not forgotten you. God has found you. The word of God says that he'll leave the 90 and the 9, and he'll go into that one. That's what the word of God says in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 18. It says he'll leave the 99. It says that he's going to on his name, but the word of God says this, that he rejects the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's what the word of God says. He says, don't harden your heart as in the day of the provocation. Don't harden your heart when you hear the word of God. Don't turn away from God. He says, turn unto him. He says, humble yourself. And he says, God will send grace and mercy upon your life. Folks, I'm here to tell you tonight, in the midst of this debauchery, in the midst of the wickedness, there is hope and there is life in Christ Jesus. In the midst of the darkness, he has made himself manifest. He has shown himself. He has spoken through holy men of old in this day and age. The word of God says in the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Yes. No, thank you, sir. No, thank you, sir. The Bible says this. It says that the things that we see, the things that we hear, it says that many mighty men, many noble men, even many prophets, desire to see those things, but they could not see those things. But God has restrained those things. He's held those things back for this very hour. Do you not know that behold, now is the accepted time? that God has sought you out. Many of you have cried out and said, God, if you're real, show me how real you are. Folks, I'm here to tell you tonight, the Word of God says in Philippians 1 and 6, that he that began a good work in you, he's going to be faithful to complete it, even to the day of Christ Jesus. If he's got to send bosses of righteousness to a place such as this, you know what? God is willing to do that. God is willing to go to that nth degree. God is willing to go to that place to tell you that he can set you free. That God's not like our earthly fathers. God's not like that. God's not a beautiful like our earthly fathers. He's not one that will reject us, but the Bible says if we come to Him, He'll receive us of His own. If we come in humility, if we come with a, with a heart of, of repentance towards Him, that's why the Word of God says, repent you therefore and be converted. Why? Because the time is coming that judgment is going to begin to fall upon this nation. Folks, you know what? You can go out into the city, you can go out into the country, and you can look at the clouds, and you can tell when it's going to rain. Did you not even deserve the signs of the times? Folks, I'm here to tell you, that God will not do anything. God will not speak, he said, unless he first reveals it through the voice of his prophets. And I believe that God is raising up voices in this day and age to tell you he's coming quickly, that he's coming like a thief in the night. He says that two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. He says that two will be laying in a bed, one will be taken, and one will be left. Are you willing to be that one that's left tonight? Because the word of God says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, he says that there's a wide gate that leads to destruction. There's a wide gate that leads to those that are left. There's there's a wide gate to the mocker and the hard-hearted. There's a wide gate for the vaccinated religious person. There's a wide gate for those that would sicker and steer. There's a wide gate. The Bible says it leads to destruction. The Bible also says in Proverbs 14 and 12, it says there's a way. There's a way that seems so right to a man. It seems so good. It seems that God would honor it. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. It seems so okay. That's what the Word says. Proverbs 14, 12. There's a way that seems okay. I'm just having a good time. I'm just having a little fun. God's going to have to understand. But folks, I'm here to tell you that God is holy, that God is righteous, that, that no sin is going to find itself into heaven. That's why God sent the perfect, holy Lamb of God to be the propitiation for your sins, to pay that sin's debt, to wash away every sin, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Bible says that He's been given a name above every other name, that it's the name of Jesus that every knee has got to bow and every tongue to Confess that he is Lord. And we do that. What's he going to do? He's going to be that advocate. He's going to be that voice that speaks to the Father upon our heart, on our behalf. He's going to say like he did from the cross, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. I think they put their faith in me, just like he told the people on the cross, that, hey, you'll be with me in paradise. Folks, I'm here to tell you that God is still extending mercy. But he, tell you what, he rejects the cross. Don't continue to harden your heart.
heart. The Word of God says this in the book of Revelation, chapter 20. It says, I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And it says a book was open. And it says another book was open, which is the book of life. And whoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's not God's plan. That's not God's desire. The Word of God says that He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Folks, to turn away from our sins. God does not want to judge you in that day. That's why God paid such a terrible price by sending His Son, Jesus. God does not want to have to look into your life that day, according to Matthew 7. and say, depart from me. I don't know who you are. And cast you into the lake of fire. That is not God's desire. God's desire, the Word of God says this, that God is not slack concerning His promises, as some men count slackness. But He's long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, not willing that any should die and go to hell, not the, not the drug addict, not the, the, the homosexual, not the pedophile. He don't want anyone to perish, but that all would come to, to repentance and eternal life. Folks, I'm here to tell you tonight that God is sending out a cry for mercy. God is sending out a cry saying, repent and believe the gospel. That's what God is saying. God is saying, behold, now is the accepted time that today is the day of salvation. That God is looking. The word of God says, it says the Spirit goes about. The Spirit of God goes about looking for those that He can show Himself strong on behalf of. God is looking for young men to stand up to be a voice of a generation. That's what He's looking for. He's looking for righteous women to say, you know what? No more am I going to be a sex object. He's going to look for young men that are going to say, no more am I going to take advantage of a girl any longer. He's looking for men of character and men of holiness. But folks, I'm here to tell you there's only one way that that can happen. It's through a relationship with Jesus. Christ. I want to speak to the backslider tonight. The word says that he's married to the backslider. If you're in earshot of my voice tonight, you know what I'm talking about, sir. There's a reason that you're walking down the street with a cross around your neck. Because you've heard the truth, haven't you, young man? You know, and the Bible says for those that know to do right, and they know to them in his sin, that the wages of sin is death. Behold the Lamb of God slain before the foundations of the world. He's come to take away your sin, not to leave you in the bondage to that sin. Tonight, I'm telling I cry out with compassion. The Word of God says in the book of Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, it says when Jesus looked at the multitude, when He looked at the tens of thousands of people, it says He was moved with compassion. He says, why? Because they were scattered and they were fainted and they were like a sheep without a shepherd. He was moved and He said, Father, I pray that You would send laborers into the harvest field. For indeed, the harvest that I tonight is plenteous, but the laborers are few. The compassion and the mercy and the forgiveness God is here. For anyone that would call upon His name, God is looking for someone to stand up. And to stand up and call upon the name of Jesus. The Word of God says, It shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You've got to surrender title, deed, and ownership of your life to Him. It's not using His word name as a byword. It's not going in a church. Look at our for you. He's not coming back for a Catholic church or a Baptist church or a Pentecostal church. He's coming back for a blood bought church. He's coming back for a church, a bride without spot or blemish. That's who Jesus the Christ is coming back for. But folks, there's only one way that we can be found not guilty. It's through putting our faith in the finished work of what Jesus Christ did upon the cross of Calvary. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. The day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Folks, this is the day. This may be the day that your soul is required upon for you. Are you promised another moment? Are you promised another second? Folks, listen, this might be the day that your soul is required of you. Just two weeks ago, right here on the same street, a young man that was a, a member of the United States Armed Forces, a Marine, passed by us as we witnessed just a block over a couple hours later. As he began to defend his life, he was stabbed and killed, died as a terrible death on the street. Do you think that that was God's plan? What if he would have stopped? What if he would have yielded to the Spirit of God? What if he would have been in a different environment? You know what happens, folks? The Word of God says in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, He says to abstain even from the appearance of evil. When I began to put myself in places like this, the Bible says that be not deceived, that God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Folks, I'm here to tell you that God is not mocked. God is not mocked. Don't think that judgment is delayed. It's judgment for God. Do you hear me today? Don't think just because God has delayed His judgment that He has forgotten the judgment. The Bible says it shall happen that God will judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and at His kingdom. And that's what He says. He tells us to preach the word, the instant in season, out of season. Why? Because the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, just like this, just like this girl. It says that they won't even hear the word. They'll heart their hearts. They'll hear the name of Jesus, and they'll just walk on by. That's what the Bible 
Joseph. <laughs>